Before I look at the winner of this year's cock, a word on the name. The cock is the defiance in ignorance prize for the dumbest question asked in the arrogant belief that there's no possible answer. It was originally called the Stone Commander Prize, named after the guy who asked why all the planets are round, but Stone Commander later retracted his question and apologised for the rather aggressive way in which he had phrased it, so I had to rename the prize, and it was called the Cock after a YouTuber who won it the following year. But then the YouTuber Cock, real name Andy, released a video in which he recanted his faith. Sorry, I am no longer a Christian because... I don't want to be in that club. Two in a row. The Defiance in Ignorance Prize seems to have that kind of reverse road to Damascus effect on those on whom it's bestowed. In view of Andy's conversion, I was going to rename the prize yet again, and according to tradition, name it after the last recipient not to recant his beliefs. In other words, the bill. But then Andy released a video that shows he's not ready to relinquish the title just yet. Sorry, Bill. Fucking thing sucks! Billy! Now sit and watch Andy's video nicely. How comes when I eat a banana it doesn't poison me? If evolution is true and the survival of the fittest and all that kind of thing is going on, then how comes when I munch into this nice, I suppose they're juicy really, aren't they? This this nice, firm banana, it's not going to kill me. So that's it. If evolution is true, why aren't bananas poisonous? It's rather like asking, if evolution is true, how come monkeys can breathe? Now, before you start wondering whether Andy has won the cock yet again, let me point out that, dumb as his question is, there is one that's better. So he's not this year's recipient. But his question does show that the prize is still deserving of his name. The penis, not a very nice word, (sighs) embarrassing word. Yes, but you chose it, Andy, so the prize remains named in your honour. And just to show how dumb your question was in the defiant belief that there's no possible answer, let me explain why bananas don't poison people who eat them and don't want to poison people who eat them. And I'll start with the response I gave to Ray Comfort, who was also fixated with bananas. Behold the atheist's nightmare. Okay, that's enough, Ray. As I pointed out, the modern banana has been cultivated over thousands of years, and it's descended from an ancestor that was chock full of seeds. That's what makes it a fruit, more specifically a berry. And all fruits are edible, if not by us, then by other birds or animals. They have to be in order to propagate the species. So why does Andy think fruits ought to be poisonous? If evolution were true, and a survival of the fittest... Why has not the banana tree, or the apple tree, or the orange tree, the limes, the lemons, and the plums, and the, all the other fruit trees, and uh, other fruit plants as well, how comes they have not evolved some kind of a mechanism to repel people like me from eating bananas? Let's try another analogy, Andy. Asking why fruit or berries haven't evolved some mechanism to stop animals eating them is like asking why women haven't developed some mechanism to stop men wanting to have sex with them, why flowers haven't developed some mechanism to stop bees taking their pollen. You do understand that the whole purpose of a fruit or a berry is to encourage its consumption by animals, right? OK, obviously this is a little hard. Let's get Tonto in to explain the whole thing in just 29 words of one syllable. Tree makes seed. Seed drop. Not good. Tree wants seed go far. So tree make fruit. Bear eat fruit. Bear poop seed in woods. New tree grow. Get it, cock? So it looks like the cock will have to keep its name until Andy's conversion into the world of reality is complete. But now let's unveil the face of this year's real winner from behind the trashy redneck curtain. This is a YouTuber called Moan. Now, in case you don't get what you're about to see, Moan plays two roles in the following video clip. 
Normally, he shows the intelligent face of a creationist, but when he wants to portray an atheist, he uses his incomparable acting skills to completely transform his appearance into someone stupid, like this. I know, hard to believe it's the same person. Dumb atheist, smart creationist, smart creationist, dumb atheist. All clear? Okay then, on to the question. Excuse me, Mr. Atheist, you believe in evolution, uh -huh. and even though it's okay to believe in evolution and God at the same time, I just have a question for you. Yep. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg. Um, well, I guess the... the chicken came first, yeah, the chicken. No, the egg. But chickens come from eggs. Oh, um, well... I guess the egg came first. Yeah, the egg. That's what I said. But eggs come from chickens. No, eggs come from just about every reproductive animal. They're not exclusive to chickens. The oldest egg fossils that have been found date back to the Cambrian over 500 million years ago. Before fish, before reptiles, and long before chickens. Chickens didn't turn up in the fossil record until fairly recently on the geological timescale. Even if you only want to look at eggs with a yolk and a hard shell that gets sat on in a nest, they were laid by the ancestors of chickens hundreds of millions of years before chickens appeared. OK now? No, it's never that easy when you're trying to explain something to a creationist play-acting the part of an atheist. OK. Actually, what really happened is the chicken and the egg both came at the same time. They evolved from fish and fish eggs. Oh, which one came first, the fish or the fish egg? Um, the fish. The fish come from fish eggs. Oh, wait a minute, the egg. But fish eggs come from fish. This could very well be the stupidest person on the face of the earth. Look, Moan, as I've explained, the oldest egg fossils are over 500 million years old. That's long before they were even fish. So you can take your argument further back to the Cambrian or further still to when one cell entered another cell and shared DNA, creating the first proto-egg, and then ask which came first, the bacterium or the egg, in which case it was the bacterium. And then you can ask where bacteria come from, and I'd refer you to my video, The Origin of Life Made Easy. Eggs have evolved alongside the organisms that carry them, so asking which evolved first is rather like asking which came first, the human or the human ear. So I guess this means that one of them had to be created. No, it means that you didn't bother to look up the answer, which in this day and age takes no more than a few clicks of the mouse. Now, which came first is a fair question when asked by a six-year-old with a genuine inquiring mind. But this was a question asked in the arrogant belief that there's no possible answer. And what makes this nonsense doubly funny is that the video is called Atheism Destroyed with One Question. So, Moan, you're a worthy winner of this year's bill. I, I mean, cock.